Welcome to the podcast. I'm Rosa Coelho, your host, lifestyle entrepreneur, health coach, and speaker. I've gone from being in complete overwhelm, burning the candle at both ends, and watching my health, relationships, and business suffer, to creating a life with more joy, ease, and abundance. If you're ready to let go of the overwhelm, reclaim your health, and push past your comfort zone so that you can unleash your next level of success to create a greater impact, then sit back as we delve into conversations as well as bring on guests to share with you tools, knowledge, and real action steps to get you there. Listen in because you never know when you may hear something that changes everything. Hello, beautiful friend. Welcome to this week's episode. We are talking all about the reasons why you're not sticking to that workout routine. Oh my goodness, it is so frustrating when, you know, you feel so excited, you're going gung-ho, top of the world, and then all of a sudden something happens or just nothing happens, you just lose motivation, and before you know it, you're kind of back in a slump again. So today I want to talk about the reasons that that is, but then I also want to give you solutions for that because that's what I'm good at. I'm good at coaching women to stick to their routines a long term. So how do you, how do you make it, how do you go from something that you do for these periods of time where you feel really good to actually making it a lifestyle and a part of who you are, a part of your identity. So we're going to talk all about that. So the biggest thing, oh, the biggest thing, I don't think these are in any particular order. When we say the biggest thing, it could be the big, biggest thing for you, but maybe number two will be the biggest thing for you. We'll see. <laughs> One of the reasons is literally too much too soon. So you have those times where you're like, okay, that's it. Something's coming up, whether it's a wedding or whether it's a holiday or, you know, you just have a moment of frustration where you're like, okay, that's it. It's time to get in shape. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym five times this week, or I'm going to run, you know, every day this week, or I'm going to like, you just go all gung ho and I'm going to cut this out and this out and this out of my diet. And I'm just going to go for it. And this is it. And I know I'm going to be motivated and I'm going to feel so good, but it's just such a shock to the system and not only just your body, but also um, just a total change in routine. So here you have your everyday life that you've already had all these habits and patterns and all of a sudden you need to add this to it and it can feel really overwhelming once that motivation starts to die down. The next thing is lack of results. So you've been going to the gym or you've been running, or you've been working out at home, and it's been, you know, maybe even it's been a good amount of time. Maybe it has been the typical four to six weeks, and you're like, oh man, I've really been working at this, but I don't really feel like the results are strong enough. Like, yeah, you've maybe you've made some results, but it's just not what you expected for the amount of effort that you put in. So we're going to talk about that because that is very possible that you are actually putting in so much great effort, yet somewhere something is up as to why you're not getting the results. And number three is just lost motivation. And that happens. You know, we have that really excited feeling. We're on top of the world. We're so like in that moment, feel such conviction of what we want, what we desire, what we're ready to do, what we're ready to sacrifice. And then for whatever reason, it just disappears, whether it's because you've become overwhelmed or something has changed in your life or work has become really busy or um, you're just feeling really fatigued. It could just be a number of things, but that motivation has disappeared and you're like, where is it? I need you back because <laughs> it's not like your desire for what you want for yourself goes away. It's just the effort that it takes to get what you want. Okay, so let's talk about the actual solutions to these issues. So the first one I want to talk about is the doing too much too soon and going all gung-ho <laughs> out of this world crazy with it. Oh my goodness. That is one of the, that is really definitely something that um, 
I see a lot and have experienced it myself. Everything I'm talking about isn't just experiences that I've had with clients. It's things that I have gone through in the past as well. Um, Definitely before my training and health coaching days and then even in the early days. Now it's not so hard for me because training and health coaching is what I do. It's really part of my identity and and it's um, part of my job. So that makes it easy. But do you have to make it your job (laughs) to become healthy? Definitely not. (laughs) So what I always recommend is choosing or having, writing down what your bare minimum is. And this I do for myself even to this day. So by bare minimum, I mean, okay, I am committing to my bare minimum is one strength training day a week and one interval training day a week. Yours might be two strength training days a week and that's it. Yours might even be one strength training day a week or one workout day a week. Whatever your minimum is, there's no wrong. It's just that's what you're going to do and anything else you do is a bonus. This is so important because what it means is maybe typically you're doing, like I I personally feel really good strength training two to three days a week, doing one interval training day a week, and then also um, walking every day between that. And that feels great for me. But even with me, there are weeks that get just crazy busy or things come up, right? Things with family and friends and people need you. And um, I know this whole put yourself first is so important. And it is, but there are circumstances where sometimes we need to put our friends and family first, right? It's give or take when we need someone, then, you know, we want to nurture those relationships because we'll need it too someday. Um, It doesn't mean put yourself last, but if you have this idea of bare minimum, then on those weeks where possibly you had to say yes to other things, then you still get that bare minimum in and you're not beating yourself up about it. You're not feeling guilty about it. You're like, okay, I still made progress towards our goals. Because if you look at the course of an entire year, you're not going to have those crazy weeks every single week. And if you do, then, you know, I'm going to suggest that you really look inwards and look at your lifestyle and look at where you can make changes because that means you're likely living with chronic stress and that's not a good place to be in. So I would say in that case, you know, you're going to be doing a little bit more work (laughs) in that area before you even consider the working out. However, for most of us, when we look at our entire week, we may have those stressful weeks um, throughout the year. Maybe every couple months a week comes up like that, something like that. Everyone's a little different. But for the majority of the time, you're going to be able to get in what you actually want to do. So for me, again, it's strength training three days a week and one, one day intervals. But when I can't, I just look at what is my base what is my that minimum, that base that I will commit to no matter what? And I find that is such a healthy, healthy approach to doing it. And also that's what gets you to results long term because you don't have this start stop. You may have high pro, like high productive weeks and you might have like a lower one, again, that baseline. However, you don't just give up, you don't just quit. And, start, and have that whole feeling, that whole guilt cycle comes and that starting and stopping thing, which is not healthy. Do we ever really start stop? I mean, we're just living life, right? <laughs> like, So I'm not a big fan of that whole mentality either. But again, commit to what that base is and that will make a huge difference. Okay, so that's how you get over the too much too soon. Yes, it's okay to go. I think it's actually okay to go gung-ho if you want to, if you're feeling feeling like that's where you want to be. However, have that minimum for when that motivation will dwindle because it will. We know that we don't, we're not riding high all the time, like soaking in that motivation. Okay. Number two is let's talk about falling in love. Let's talk about lack of motivation. That's a really important one. I'm just numbering these as I go along. Um, Lack of motivation. So how do you, you know, if, if personal trainers or health coaches or nutritionists could motivate their clients to results, like everyone would have a hundred percent of their clients getting results all the time. It would be absolutely amazing, but that doesn't happen even for their very best of trainers. Why? Because 
health coaches, trainers, nutritionists, all these people out there to help you make a difference are not there to motivate you. Motivation is something so um, like, what's the word? Fiscal? Is that a word? I don't know. (laughs) Just, it comes and goes and only you can really motivate yourself. What a good health coach, trainer, nutritionist will do is one, teach you, teach you the knowledge that you need to know exactly what to do to get to your goals, but also how to fall in love with discipline. And I love this. Fall in love with the discipline of achieving that bare minimum that we talked about. And, uh, you know, the word bare minimum sounds so like, oh, that's never going to get me results. Of course it's going to. It's just how we're, let's talk about that base. Let's change it from bare minimum to the base. I kind of interchange those a lot. Um, So fall in love with the discipline. Fall in love with, you know, that feeling where you didn't want to go do that workout or you didn't want to make that good food choice habit or whatever it is. You didn't want to go to bed early, even though you know know that you needed to in order to get a good night's sleep to feel great the next day. But you didn't want to do it, but you did it anyway. Oh, now that feeling, that feeling is better than any motivation. And that feeling, the more you practice, practice that feeling, the more solid it will become and the more disciplined you will become. And that, my friend, is where results come from. They come from those moments where you didn't want to do it, but you knew it was the right thing to do and you did it anyway. Those are the moments when we talk about self-care, putting yourself first, all this kind of stuff, or like, you know, self-care, we talk about bubble baths and doing our nails. And I mean, all those stuff, all those things are beautiful. I always talk about how I love those things, but that's not true self-care. True self-care, the definition of it, in my definition of it, is when you say yes. Yes to yourself. Yes to the thing that felt hard, but you did it anyway. Because here's the thing. It's not going to feel hard forever. It's going to eventually become a habit. It's eventually going to become lifestyle. And it's eventually going to become your identity. And that's a beautiful thing when all these good habits that are in place are just something you do. No one questions it. We all know that person that's like, oh yeah, they always go to bed at nine. Oh, don't call them. It's it's too late to call them. Like they don't care. That's the yes that they've said to themselves. We all, it's become part of their identity. We all know that person and we're like, oh yeah, they're, they just go to the gym at this time or they just work out or don't interrupt them here because this is what they're doing. Like it's part of their identity and people around them know it. And that's a beautiful thing. So again, fall in love with the discipline, not with motivation. Whenever you have motivation, I mean, embrace it. It's like the best feeling, right? It's like the cherry on top. Who doesn't love feeling motivated? It's such an exciting, exhilarating, awesome feeling. So throughout the year, when you tap into those moments of motivation, like love them, like that's awesome. Motivation is often what gets us that kick start, like that little jump start. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a great reason. And that's okay to use that motivation to start things. However, be aware that it does dwindle. It kind of, I like to think of it as in waves, right? It comes in waves. It's not like when you lose motivation, you're never going to get it again. Or when you have it, that you're going to keep it forever. It's like waves. So ride that wave when it comes in. And when it's not tap into that discipline because it's the discipline that's going to get you the results. And I wish that we would talk more about this and stop looking to others to motivate us, but have look for people that are willing to teach you the skills, the habits that will get you results and so that you can turn them into these beautiful little areas of discipline where you are saying yes to yourself, even when it feels hard. Okay, the third one is I have this is one of my favorites. No no results or not enough results. Wah. I was actually it's funny. I was actually originally going to talk call this podcast episode I'm the most boring trainer in the world. <laughs> but I changed my mind to the what um I changed my mind to what I was going to title it. However, this is part of the topic that I want to talk about. And that's that as a trainer, I am extremely boring. 
my clients will tell you. We do squats, lunges, push-ups, pull-ups, uh, deadlifts, stiff leg deadlifts, Bulgarian split squats, bear crawls. Like we, I do not have you balancing on a BOSU ball with on one leg doing a bicep curl while jumping onto another, I don't know. <laughs> I just like, can't even think of it. <laughs> but here's the thing. I am not here to entertain my clients. And there are some very specific strength training moves that get you incredible results when it comes to building muscle. It's important to learn them and it's important how many of them to do and how to progressively overload because that's how you build lean muscle. And if you want to lose body fat, you want to change your body shape, then strength training is crucial. And it's crucial for so many other reasons, women, like for women, they, it's, I like to call it like the anti-aging solution. It's incredible. Having lean muscle is key to staying injury free. It's key to longevity. It is just key to everything. And if I could tell, give women one piece of advice, like if I were to say there's only one workout you're allowed to do above all else, I would say, and walking not included because walking is just something we should do every day. But let's say we're talking Zumba or we're talking interval training or we're talking uh, yoga or we're talking whatever it is. I would say if there was only one, I would say strength training. Now, do I believe strength training is the only thing we should do? No. However, if I was in the corner and you're like, you can only have one thing, (laughs) I would do strength training. And the reason is when you strength train properly as well, uh, you're also going to become more flexible. And this isn't a reason why I don't go to many classes because so often in classes, they are having you do things that are still a little bit old school. I mean, I had this happen recently. (laughs) I'm sure my friend's listening in because I went to the class with her. But this is a perfect scenario why I don't often do classes. I did a class because I wanted to spend time with a good friend and I'll probably go again, to be honest. I'll just have to be a little stronger in, in my, uh, resolve. But basically what happened is we were doing Bulgarian split squats. So if you don't know what that is, it's when you put your one leg um, up higher and you're in um, kind of like a lunge position, but you're not going to be moving your feet. And then you just drop your knee down and and up. So it's like, anyways, it's like a split squat. Um, so what happened was I instantly had my friend and a couple of the trainers beg, like coming to me and telling me, oh my goodness, your knee's going over your toe. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. That's so bad for you. And I was like, oh gosh, I don't want to be that person. And so I let it go. I listened. I thought it wouldn't make a big difference. But I'm telling you, for two weeks, I had knee pain. Why? A couple things. One, my back leg should not have been that high. It shouldn't have been on that bench. I hadn't been training split squats or Bulgarian squats, whatever I call them, something different every time. Um, But that's what there was. And so I just went along with it. Second thing is, I don't believe in this whole, your knee shouldn't go over your toe. Our, Our bodies are made to be used in full range. So if my knee is going slightly over my toe, now it's very different if my knee is not tracking properly, if it's caving in or caving out, then yes, that's what you wanna work on. But I really believe in doing things full range. What what that did by stopping it at that 90 degrees is that it put so much pressure through my knee and through my ligaments that it, I ended up with a strain. And so it's really, um, it's really important to know what you're doing, but also, like I said, to not go for being entertained how I entertain my clients. I'll tell you why I've, I have like when I was in London and training full time in terms of personal training, not, um, doing the health coaching as well. Cause now I health coach online. But when I was just like full-time personal training at the studio, I had clients for years from the time I started being a trainer till the time I left. And that was incredible. And yet I used to say to them, you know what? you could do this yourself. You know exactly what to do. We're not doing anything new or exciting. But what they were falling in love with were a few things. One, we would talk about other things. Like we would learn, I would teach my clients about nutrition, about lifestyle. We would work on a specific skill, which was super fun. Like for example, 
We would work on getting a personal best with pull-ups or a personal best with Turkish get-ups. I had women Turkish getting, tur- doing a Turkish get-up with, one of them did it up to, not one of them, a couple of them did it with 24 kilos. Imagine getting up with 24 kilos above your head, one arm, just so impressive. So they were falling in love and being being excited by results, by hitting personal bests, That's what you want to get excited about. You don't want to get excited about or be entertained or need to do a million different exercises. And I think too often we're just like, we want to be entertained. (laughs) But I have another thing to say with if you're just being entertained and creating exercises for the sake of creating them is I also want to put it out there that you're likely not in your body in that moment. Um, And what I mean by that is when I'm training my clients, You may be squatting, but you are creating muscular tension. You are focused on how your back feels, how your core feels. You're using your entire body, even though the exercise is predominantly for your quads. We get the most out of the exercise as we can. So anyway, friends, that those are the three things that I really feel will make a huge, huge impact on your results. So number one, and your results in terms of staying committed and staying long-term with your workout routines. So number one is create that base. I know I was calling it that bare minimum. Let's change it to base. Create that base of what you must do each week and don't be ridiculous with it. Like literally this is your base. So if your base is one time a week, that is awesome. If it's two times a week, that's great. I would really say that three times a week is not a base. (laughs) Like you just want to have that base that you're going to do on those weeks that really feel impossible when they come. Number two is fall in love with discipline, not with motivation. Ride the waves of motivation, love it, but fall in love with discipline. And number three is get excited by the results, not by entertaining or needing to do many different things, fall in love with results and having those key movements that will make a huge difference and bring you those results. All right, my friends, that's what I had for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you loved it or if you've had any aha moments, uh, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. Uh, Share this podcast as well on social media. That makes such a difference. And also leave me a review on iTunes. I'd so appreciate it. Have a beautiful week. Thank you so much for listening in today. I know time is precious and I'm grateful you shared yours with me. It would mean the world to me if you felt an impact, a moment of inspiration, or learned something new. If you would share it with those you care about and leave me a review on iTunes. I'd love to know what spoke to you or what you'd like to hear more of. Your sharing and leaving a review would help so much on this journey to making an impact on as many people as possible. It's worth it. I know from experience, there are moments when something we hear has the possibility of changing everything.